Nick Orla Hegarty and Tom Fitzgerald, the Irish officer, construction officer for Unite. Good morning to you, Tom. Good morning. Tom, it's week two. People have headed back to work. What's the response from your members been so far? Well, we've had, we've had mixed feelings uh, in terms of some positive feedback, some stories that have been different. We've had to intervene, try and resolve, but it's still very early days with a, a, a small percentage of sector back. But from our point of view, it's some of the key macro-level issues that need to be addressed at this early stage of the sector opening up uh, to ensure that uh, construction workers can be back in work, earn their living in a safe way. Chief amongst them are the need to increase the resources for the HSA uh, in terms of inspectors, in terms of empowerment, uh, to ensure they can intervene in a decisive way in the building sector to establish high levels of compliance with safety with the national protocols and the various agreements. But we also need employers in the sector to play their role. We need significant engagement across the sector uh, at, uh, uh, around the representation uh, of safety uh, reps, uh, compliance officers and so on. But that needs to be done in conjunction with the unions. There's no formal agreement in place in that regard. We also need, from a government and uh, uh, employer perspective, protections for those workers who face genuine concerns in terms of being going back to work. We've given examples in the past where workers, uh, construction worker going to work, his partner's a carer at home and a very sick child at home. He's had significant service to the company, doesn't have the option uh, to stay on layoff if he so chooses to do it. Uh, and there's a question mark at the stage about the ongoing protections of the state in terms of COVID-19, the way it's subsidies game. They should remain in place until we see uh, how events unfold in the coming weeks and months in the sector. Now, the other side of this is that we also have over 10,000 people homeless. We know that social housing were among the first sites to go back. How do we balance the, the need for, for construction and, and for housing, the desperate need for housing, alongside workers' rights? That balance can be struck, absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, I suppose, putting those four key points I've just said in, in place there, ongoing engagement with the trade union movement, and fundamentally, ongoing engagement with workers and building sites. Workers have a huge experience, workers are sensible, workers also have the same concerns everybody else in the community ha have. Uh, so, engagement at local level, including the election of workplace representatives, uh, and a sensible approach uh, that uh, is central to that is health and safety over just a simple message of profit and profitability. That balance can be struck. And Tom, you're a carpenter by trade yourself. You've been on heaps of building sites, I imagine. How practical is that two-metre two meter distance going to be? It will always be a here to. Surely there's, there's going to be some leeway. It, it's a long time since I worked on building sites as a carpenter, but of course it sticks with you, it stays with you forever. Um, there are practical difficulties, no question, where social distance can be achieved, but there's mechanisms in the protocol to, to ensure that uh, significant bespoke uh, PPE, etc., and where it can't be achieved, the work shouldn't be done. Uh, but again, I, I would point to the point about the, the need for sense and sensibility. Construction workers have a huge experience, I would say, to management across the sector, engage with workers, and we'll find solutions that build the projects need to be built, uh, but keep workers safe and ultimately keep communities safe and keep that curve as flat as we possibly can. And right now, the focus seems to be on self regulation on, on sites making sure they've got their own protocols and policing their own sites. How comfortable do you think it would be for a construction worker to, to raise concerns and say, look, I've got a sick, I've got a sick wife at home, I've got a, a child with a pre-existing condition. Are they comfortable enough to raise those concerns, do you think? I don't think there's enough in place to allow construction workers to comfortably raise those concerns. Uh, and the point that you said there about the idea of self-regulation, we put a press release out a couple of weeks ago saying that's not a run in the construction sector. And unfortunately, the construction sector has a poor history in terms of self-regulation. Uh, uh, what we need is those robust mechanisms in place, make sure that the uh, state agency and the Health and Safety Authority is empowered uh, and that there's significant engagement with workers uh, and trade unions in the sector above what exists at the present moment of time. There's more to be done. Now, it is early days and we stay optimistic, uh, but there is more to be done. Thank you so much for your time here this morning, Tom. And now joining us is Orla Hegarty, a UCD academic and an architect. Orla, thank you for joining us here this morning.